So if you have not looked at your portfolio today, odds are all hell is breaking loose inside of it. The Nasdaq is down 2.5%. Tesla stock is down almost 4% at the time of recording this video. At the same time, Tesla is seeing some breaking news on the day that just can't get appreciated when the markets are acting this irrationally, or maybe they're acting rationally. We're going to get into everything you need to know here on the day in the broader markets as well as Tesla stock and give you a glimpse on what could be coming next and what the next biggest catalysts are for the markets and Tesla stock. If the almighty YouTube algorithm has not blessed you with coming across this channel so far, well, today is your lucky day. If you like to make money and you wanna make more of it, and just stay up to date with everything happening in the markets every single day, as well as Tesla, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Let's go ahead and get straight into it. Everything is selling down by quite a bit today because Fitch just downgraded the US long term credit rating from triple A to double A plus. Fitch says they expect fiscal deterioration over the next three years, an erosion of governments, and a growing general debt burden. Quote, the repeated debt limit political standoffs and last minute resolutions have eroded confidence in fiscal management. They also say that there has been a steady deterioration in standards of governments over the last 20 years, including on fiscal and debt matters, notwithstanding the June bipartisan agreement to suspend the debt limit until January 2025. Fitch also highlighted the rising general government deficit, which it anticipates will rise to 6.3% of gross domestic product in 2023 from 3.7% in 2022. Two, cuts to non-defense discretionary spending, 15% of total federal spending, as agreed in the Fiscal Responsibility Act, offer only a modest improvement to the medium-term fiscal outlook. Fitch also noted that the combination of tightening credit conditions, weakening business investment, and a slowdown in consumption could lead the economy into a mild recession in the fourth quarter of 2023 and first quarter of next year. This downgrade is much the same way as if your credit score were to fall by 50 basis points or so. If you went from a 750 to a 700, you're going to pay slightly more when you go to get that new loan. And that's exactly what's happening in the treasury market here today. The 10-year treasury is up by about 5 basis points, now at 4.09%, and you're starting to get close to new highs of this cycle. The only other highs that you have seen during this rate tightening cycle so far were in October and November of 2022. And you know what happened during that time. Well, the markets were sitting at their lows on the NASDAQ. This was down about 40% from all-time highs. So it looks like the markets might have some catching up to do. Not to mention the last time our credit rating was downgraded from, again, the AAA to the AA+, the same downgrade that we're seeing today, it was back in 2011, and the S&P fell 6.5% the next day, and overall fell about 21% from the highs to the lows. So the history does not look good when you get these credit rating downgrades. More pressing near-term catalysts are going to be Apple and Amazon earnings on Thursday. If these earnings hold up and they come in better than expectations, well, I wouldn't expect that the markets would continue to crash. Although if these earnings come in terrible and worse than expectations, you could be in for a 20% crash in the markets. And at this point, might as well call it a correction because you have rallied so aggressively. My base case is not for a 20% crash, but to see some kind of correction. 5 to 10% makes a lot more sense to me, but again, it's all going to come down to Apple and Amazon earnings on Thursday. Now to the breaking news for Tesla stock today. It's India. Specifically, Tesla just leased almost 6 thousand square feet in a busy business district of India. This comes right before top executives from Tesla are meeting with the Indian government officials to discuss its foray into the country. And they picked up space in Poon's Veeman Nagar locality. 
This is in the Panchil Business Park. If you look at this on the map, it's right here, right on the coast. So this is more solid information, news, that Tesla is probably looking to expand in India a lot faster than what we previously expected. This lease is for three years. They can opt to renew the lease once three years is up and figure out if they want to get a bigger building or not, if operations are going as, as planned, reevaluate three years down the line. Tesla also extends its lithium hydroxide supply agreement with China until 2030. This new contract is set to run from August 1st, 2023 to December 31st, 2030. So it's a long-term contract. The last contract that we seen signed with this Chinese company was on December 29th, 2020 for the supply of battery class lithium hydroxide from 2021 through 2025. Under the renewed agreement, both parties plan to build upon the foundations laid by the original contract to ensure a steady and reliable supply of lithium hydroxide, a crucial component in producing lithium ion batteries. Tesla is also moving lithium processing in house with the company currently building a battery grade lithium hydroxide refining facility in Texas to support the processing, refining and manufacturing of battery materials for the automaker's battery production. I cannot stress enough how important this is to get your hands on enough product or supply to be able to meet the demand for your product. If Tesla wants to continue to grow and scale to millions and millions of deliveries a year, they need to have constant supply chains. They need to have a constant supply of raw materials. The company to get that first and solidify contracts first is going to do a, a lot better than companies stepping into the game with greater production volumes in 2024, 2025, or beyond. I should also point out that lithium hydroxide, the prices have been very stable over the past 15 months or so, so we could expect this not to affect margins all too much. Commodity prices go up and down, but when you get long-term contracts, you tend to lock in a set price upon the initial signing of that contract. So even if these prices do go higher over coming years, in which they likely will as more automakers look to produce more EVs and more demand for lithium, well, Tesla's prices should remain fixed and that should be a tailwind to help out margins over the coming years. Tesla is also emailing California buyers about up to 15,000 in available incentives. This is because of the California's Clean Cars for All program, which slices off up to 9,500 this is in addition to the state's clean vehicle rebate pro project of 7500 and a government tax credit of 7500 So you're getting $14,000 off plus up to $9,500 off your purchase of a Tesla, obviously, if you qualify. So this should be good news, should drive more sales to Tesla. So far this year, year to date, from January 1st, through the end of June, you have seen 5.8 million global sales of electric vehicles. The Model Y coming in first place with over 600,000 sales. The Model 3 in second place with over 300,000 sales. The Yuan Plus coming in at about 190,000. The Dolphin coming in at 160,000. And the Huang Mini coming in at 120,000. This just shows you the lead that Tesla has that is unrivaled. Tesla has an over 50% lead from the third selling EV globally to the Model 3. Over 50% more deliveries than the Huan Plus. It just goes to show Tesla is, is unrivaled and will be unrivaled for years to come. Elon Musk also said on Twitter, vehicle control is the final piece of the Tesla FSD AI puzzle that will drop 300,000 plus lines of C plus control code by two orders of magnitude. This is over a hundred times better. 
it is training as I write this. Our progress is currently training compute constrained, not engineer constrained. Chris Minshall comments, this confirms a suspicion I've had for a while that FSD is now compute constrained on the training side versus interface side. That's a good thing because that's a solvable problem. Looking forward to the production scaling of the Dojo hardware for the compute clusters. And I think that's the best way to put this. We just need to see more computing power over at Tesla to train full self-driving, not that we need better hardware in Tesla's to actually get full self-driving in those Teslas. So it looks like this is only a matter of time. And as a lot of people that regularly are taking drives in full self-driving, such as Holmar's catalog, I highly recommend you guys take a look at his raw footage of full self-driving. Well, Holmar's catalog thinks that's coming by the end of this year, if not in 2024. This opens the door for licensing of full self-driving, robo-taxi, all the other things that are going to really make Tesla the most valuable company in the world over the next coming years. Barron's is also pointing out that Neo, Lee, and Xpeng posted huge delivery numbers, and that's also good for Tesla stock. Based off of vehicle registration numbers that we have seen out of China for Tesla in the month of July, it looks like over 31,000 vehicles were delivered to customers. That's good news for Tesla, although it's being overshadowed as well as the rest of this good news by what's happening in the markets today. Barron's also says, don't blame the National Highways Steering Wheel Investigation, which we covered yesterday involving up to 280,000 Teslas, as the reason why the stock is falling, as some people have said. It's simply the correlation to the broader markets. If the broader markets were not selling off, Tesla would not be selling off. And I think that's important to point out. This sell-off has nothing to do with Tesla directly. It's nothing to do with the investigations over power steering that we seen come about yesterday. Tesla also heads to court in NDA battle against Rivian. NDA stands for non-disclosure agreement. Tesla stated in the complaint that, quote, Miss misappropriating Tesla's competitively useful confidential information when leaving Tesla for a new employer is obviously wrong and risky. It also claimed that Rivian had hired at least 70 former employees, some of which were caught red-handed stealing information related to technology and next-gen batteries. Additionally, CEO Elon Musk said during an interview in 2020 that Rivian was doing bad things so we sued them. It's not cool to steal our IP and for people to violate their confidentiality agreements. The trial had stagnated to an extent in December 2021, and Judge Peter said that Tesla had 30 days to produce documents that were rele relevant to the suit. The case has moved forward with these latest developments, although Rivian has denied any wrongdoing and claims the suit is Tesla's attempt to derail competitors in the EV sector. So it looks like Tesla actually has a case against Rivian. It's currently being rumored that Florida could be the next state to get Tesla insurance. After all, Florida is the state with the second highest amount of Teslas out on the road. Third is Texas. As far as Tesla stock today, the option buyers are still out. You have seen about 700 hedge fund and institutional orders worth $149 million with a positive order value of 55%, which is quite strong relative to Tesla's negative 2.5% here on the day today. As far as Tesla stock and how the stock is likely to perform going ahead into the future, I think it comes down to one simple thing. Do the markets go higher or not? If the markets continue higher, at some point, investors start to say, hey, Tesla's a great company that's relatively inexpensive, very inexpensive, 
compared to where it has traded in the past, interest rates are coming down and the odds of a soft landing, aka avoiding a recession, look more likely now than they have in the past, we should buy Tesla stock. That's the narrative that will start to take hold over the next coming months. That's not even to mention this Cybertruck, which is going to do wonders for Tesla's business. The trend is obviously good. We've seen good news after good news almost every single day. But the markets recently have been pretty weak. So if the markets do go through a massive sell-off or a crash, well... Tesla's not going to be spared the rod. Tesla stock would also fall, but it would probably fall a lot more than the markets. Tesla tends to have a beta of almost two, meaning that if the NASDAQ falls 2%, Tesla typically falls 4%. If the NASDAQ is up 2%, Tesla usually up 4% or more. So I don't expect that trend to stop anytime soon. Historically, the month of August tends to be a pretty good month for Tesla, on average around 8% positive, but historically for the broader markets, August tends to be one of the worst months. As people go on vacations, volume dries up and can be more vulnerable to any sharp down moves. So that is what is happening here on the day in the broader markets, as well as the news for Tesla stock. If you like my perspective, you like to stay up to date with all of this information on a day by day basis in the hopes that you make more money, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.